Well, hello there, and thank you for tuning in to the Shameless Sex Podcast. I'm Amy, sex educator, somatic sex and relationship coach, and sex shop owner. And I'm April, VP of an international high-end pleasure product company and boss queen sex toy mogul. We're best friends who make our own rules about who we are as sexual beings. With everything from how to be a badass in the bedroom, to pussy praising, to top tips for bringing your relationship to the next level, we have something just for you. So sit back, relax, and and enjoy enjoy the the show. show. Don't forget to head on over to our website at shamelesssex.com for more. Hello, everyone. Hiya, y'alls. Hiya, huh? Hiya. I don't know, I've been on the Southern kick today, like doing things in a Southern accent. I love a good Southern accent. What about you, Amy? I wasn't thinking that was Southern. I was thinking like karate chop. Oh. Hiya. Hiya. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> maybe that's a new Southern accent, y'all. That was cute. That was super cute. Um, Hey, everyone. So this is episode 19. And uh, wow, 19. That is, we're we're flying. We are flying. And we're here with somebody really, really good looking, like blue steel good looking. Like ridiculously (laughs) good looking. It is a man and his name. (laughs) A merman. (laughs) And his name is Alika. Are we using your last name? Could. What's your last name? Madaris. Oh, Madaris. Alika <laughs> Madaris. Yes. Don't worry. If you're just listening to us, we highly suggest going to our website and looking at the photo of this man because he's really, <laughs> really he warned me before he came to my door because we're recording upstairs. She's like, just FYI, he's a really good looking man. I was like, oh, good to know. I'm like, should I put on more makeup or something? What do you want from me? <laughs> should I change my outfit? Should I'm I like, change my I'm outfit? start doing some sit ups right now. <laughs> I thought you were going to get out your vibrator. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> next. No that's next. <laughs> Even better. Yeah, so uh, Lika Maderos. Uh, we are very excited to have him here. And he's way more than just ridiculously good looking. <laughs> so we just wanted to really sell him to you all. Sell him to you all because he's that amazing. But he also has a lot to offer the world. And what we are going to be talking about specifically today is men and sexuality and more so regarding kind of like the divine masculinity and if that sounds a little too woo woo and abstract for you um how can men be better lovers how can men be better partners how can men uh, be more true to themselves as sexual beings how can they tap deeper into their vulnerability how can they um, be more confident more skilled more dominant you you april you just pulled my hair sorry i didn't mean to do that that wasn't, that wasn't a dad she didn't like what i just said i think um, <laughs> i i loved it and you know what's great about this episode is that we get a lot of people emailing us asking us questions tips on how to improve their sex lives and i think this is a great way to tap in um from the male body perspective um because a lot of the the emailers the writers are um men that are looking to improve their sexuality and improve their sex lives so Yep. Yeah, we have a lot of a lot of a lot of men, a lot of women, all kinds of folks listening to us. So we're really excited about this, and we've kind of tapped on it in past episodes about how um, a lot of our uh, female friends have been desiring to have um, their men kind of step up in a in a new way with more confidence and more strength in their relationship. So this will be speaking to you alls and beyond. So we're excited about that. Um, before we dive in, I'm going to do a plug now and then a plug at the end of the podcast. So Alika is actually teaching a workshop at Pure Pleasure in Santa Cruz called Tantric Massage for Lovers. It's on October 21st. It will be from 6 to 9 p.m. That's on a Saturday night. And um, it is a three-hour workshop that he's teaching with his partner uh, in the workshop too. So if you're in the Santa Cruz area please come to that workshop and join us to learn more about tantric massage and we'll do a little bit on tantra in this workshop too uh and uh, if you need to learn more about that go to purepleasureshop.com and as we've mentioned before you get 15 percent off of all your purchases using coupon code shameless pp uh, in all caps and i think you can use it on workshops too so hey go get it go sign up now now Right now. Now. It's sold out. Too bad. It's gone. Is it sold out? <laughs> no. <laughs> She's so gullible. Give us a little bit of some info about you. Yeah. Who, what's, tell us about your... How did you get into this realm of sexuality? Like, Can you tell us a little... Or just uh, who, like, how you... What, who are you in this realm? <laughs> well, I, um, where do I start? I, From a very young age, I was very sexually active and... Um, it's been my passion to please women. 
Um, I guess I had a wound from a very young age where my mother was very disempowered, and I had a father who was very an alcoholic and very abusive. And uh, I wanted to know what love was. And I had this, since I'm, I guess I'm, you said I'm good looking, but I, wouldn't, I would never think myself. Ridiculously <laughs> good looking. Really, really. <laughs> <laughs> Women were always attracted to me, and I found love through women by making them fall in love with me. So I found all, I, I learned all these strategies of how to make a uh, please a woman. So was it was it like a, kind of like a, like a manipulative kind of way? Or like is this like the shadow side of it? Or you're saying that no, it was it was unconscious, um, but it and was then never. When they fell in love with you, you would like leave them. <laughs> Jumping conclusions. Our own wounding is showing up. <laughs> no, I would never leave them. Um, Abandonment issues. <laughs> Let's go back. Stop. We'll stop the question. So, anyways, you had a way of making them fall in love with you yes. <laughs> by pleasing them. <laughs> <laughs> and well, I always loved every woman I'm a, I've always been with, and but I didn't really love myself. Mm. So that you know, later on when I ended up um, moving from Hawaii, I grew up in Hawaii and grew up around nature, and I just was in love with life. And when I moved here to California, I started, I was doing massage in Hawaii, so I learned, um, actually, that's how I first caught into, like, learning to um, give women G-spot massage and female ejaculation, um, was I was doing massage, and I met this guy, and he was telling me that women are scandalous, and they all want to have sex. And I'm like, no way. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? So when I was doing massage, women wanted more than just massage. I'd be massaging them, and they'd start rubbing my hand, or, or you know. So I'd be like, "Oh, okay." So I would give them like orgasms or whatever, and these women would start coming back to me and tell me that I healed them. And I'm like, "What do you mean I healed you?" And this one woman said that her period was never regular since she was 15, and she was like 45 and married. And after doing G-spot massage on her, her period was regular she never said she got off her medication so i was like oh wow well i guess i did help her um and then i started to learn about other people dacas and sexual healing and all these we things just, what a daca is in case people don't know what a daca is i just yeah i don't know what a daca is <laughs> so really she doesn't really know <laughs> well dakinis i think ha there's more information about dakinis and they're like these sky dancers they're like these divine beings that help basically the the dakinis were the ones that um when back in the day when men would go to war, they would have to leave their feminine side. Mm -hmm. Like if their brother was dying in war next to them, they couldn't be like, oh, my God, my brother is dying. Mm -hmm. They have to keep on going. And they would leave their families, go to war. And when they came back to their families, they would go to these bikinis and the bikinis would love the war out of men so they mm -hmm. could come back into their. So sexual healers were healing through sexuality, healing other even outside of sexuality, but using their sexuality to heal. So they're like the female tantricas. Exactly. And nowadays, um, women have taken more of the masculine role. So I'm loving the, uh, helping to balance this, the masculine polarity that went, women take now with being entrepreneurs, being you know, the head of the household and taking, every, taking care of everything. Especially here in San Francisco, when the feminist movement started here, mm -hmm. um, women were upset about all these men taking control and doing everything, they wanted to change the role. So a lot of the children that were growing up, they were pampered and babied. Um, that's what we have, especially here in, in the Bay Area, we have a lot of sensitive men. Mm -hmm. And then the women are like, where's all these masculine men? And it's like, well, your mom caused all these <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> men to be more issues. feminine. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a rebalancing women took the role of more masculine and men are more here in San Francisco, mm -hmm. this area, men take more of the role of... Um, more the feminine role, I guess you could say. Yeah, I think I think, and that's when we're talking about our friends that have come to us that are asking for your know, friends who are, are are straight friends who are in relationships with men, and they're asking, they're wanting more of that that dominance thing, and it's a really confusing thing for men. I, I I'm a big proponent of the feminist movement, but I also understand how challenging that is because they want to be allies, you know. They don't, and so they confuse being dominant with being disrespectful and, and rough and you can but dominance comes from a different place it comes from um confidence it comes from a place of just knowing it's and it takes self-love it takes worthiness it takes skills uh, but i understand why that's a conf confusing conflicting thing and i just didn't think of it as that way as, as that it was like it's your mom's fault <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it makes sense it's the way that they were raised well i i definitely can um attest to the fact that like i'm a dominant 
very masculine figure in my life, like with within every relationship, I always like traditionally um, have the role of like, uh, if, if you are traditional, I'm not traditional, but like I take the man's role. Like my ex-husband would stay home and he was like, I'll be the dad um, to the kids that I'd never had. And, um, you know, in, in this rela- this new relationship that I'm in as well, uh, even though I'm with like this very dominant, like he's super masculine man, I still I am like this dominant woman in the relationship. I listen to Who Run the World Girls all the time, too. (laughs) Yeah, she takes over. I do. (laughs) I think it's about polarities, right? Yeah, Even if you're going to take the masculine role, then your man's going to your man's going to take the feminine role, and that can switch. But one person usually is the dominant. Right, and I'm trying to find the balance with that right now. And I actually had a conversation with him about it yesterday. I was like, "Am I a little too dominant?" I'm like you, usually, uh, you, he's used to very submissive um, people in his life, especially women. So I'm learning. It's a process. This is perfect time for well, this. You're podcast. challenging him too, and he's challenging yeah. you. Yes, <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> well, and this isn't an always only apply to straight relationships, right? It's the polarity between just two people, yes. right? So, like, we all have masculine, feminine, or what we you know traditionally would think of these things, whether it's softness or hardness or fire or water or whatever. It's the association. So we're not just talking about this. Isn't just for straight people or um, just for specific genders. Like we're all carrying both of these, and it, we seem to. You're, you're essentially saying we're raised in a way that makes it so we are kind of geared towards one side more so. And sometimes that makes it so that we aren't able or we're not matching our partners in a way where it's, it's out of balance. Mm-hmm. And so there's ways that we can find the balence in that through our own work and supporting each other. And I think it's a good segue to go into kind of one of the, the main things that um, really helped me in relationship and how to own my own um, masculine and my own and my feminine is around understanding what's most important to me what what are my values and what are my partner's values and does my partner's values support my values and do my values support my partner's values because if they don't we just got to cut our losses and move on but because of codependency and habit we get stuck into these you know vicious cycles of like oh fuck they're not giving me what i want but it's when we really start to own that and really see what our life demonstrates because maybe we say oh family's most important but we go to work all day and then we hang out we go to the bar and hang out with our friends and then you know our life doesn't demonstrate that family is important so we need to change that and then i link that to goals like where are we going together as a couple or where am i going or do you want to go in that same place or we're going there together and that's really important in relationships for ourselves and for um, for our partners to understand that. And not only in new relationships, I think that's important to check in with your partner on a regular, even if you're in, um, <clears throat> a, lo- a lot of people are in really long-term situations and they don't check in, they just assume it's they're both going to be in the same direction. And that's exactly what happened with my ex-partner and I. We went different directions. We loved each other immensely, but our values changed. So I think that's a wonderful point and, and, and well-worded. Well, I like this. So, like, you, what your add on there to not only so I like that from the start. This is important to check in. Like, what are your values? What are your goals? Here are mine. Oh, they're different. All right, let's cut our losses now before we get our hearts tied in here. Um, and then also in in relationship to continuously check in. Like, what are, have your our values changed? Have our goals changed? Yeah. At, at any set in time, we 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 have a set of values that are running our life, and of course they change from time to time. But it's important to check in with ourselves. Because it's all about connection. We all want to be in connected with somebody. And that's what's driving us. But if we're not... Sometimes, in, like in myself, I lost connection with myself to please somebody else. So it's about how do I stay in connection with myself and stay in connection with my partner? Mutual connection is, is the importance here. We always... I think we touch on that almost every podcast with a lot of our stuff. It, like, it all starts with you. You are in charge of your own happiness. The workshops that we've done together are about that as well. And and so it's it all starts with you. And, and um, now you've heard it from another very reliable source as well, Alika, saying the same thing. So it's true. This stuff works. It really works. <laughs> well, yes, it definitely works. So, okay, so that was... You said was kind of like what you learned what has been really powerful tool for you to that's learn like the that. foundation yeah, uh-huh. i think for 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 myself and for relationships mm-hmm. yeah for sure okay so that and so as in your journey of becoming this kind of like stepping deep into your more powerful divine masculine that was a piece that you had to learn for yourself i was in a marriage with a woman that there was a lot of love and i loved her a lot but i was very spiritual and she was more of kind of like a homebody and like did regular things that women do. And here I am like giving women orgasms and, you know, she didn't sign up for that program when we got together, but I've always been in that 
vein of wanting to go deeper around spirituality and my psychology and really healing my wounds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then the val- the the values cha- changed were later. changed. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, and, when I started to own it more. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then, what was what was the next step in that journey then for you to step deeper into, or what are some more kind of key components that keep you um, kind of on your path? Uh, well, I guess some of my self practices that I do <laughs> around building my own sexual energy is. You talked about the vibrator for an hour. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, yes, this is a regularity for me. <laughs> Ever since, um, I remember when I was a kid and I would talk to my friends and they'd be like, um, I talked to them about, you know, I masturbate for like an hour or two hours without ejaculating. And they'd be like, what are you talking about? Just do five, ten minutes and I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Probably two minutes for a lot of them. <laughs> Maybe 30 seconds, I don't know. Seconds, <laughs> yes. So for myself, I realized if I wanted to please a woman, I'd have to be able to run this high energy edging and building up my own sexual energy without ejaculating so that I could really please a woman because, you know, men are like fire and women are like water. Mm-hmm. They take a while to heat up. So mm-hmm. the more I could be able to be cool down my, my fire, I could heat up the woman's pot. Yeah. Yeah, so let's talk. About, we've talked about this in past podcasts as well, um, probably actually. But like, uh, female body genitals, they just take longer to get blood flow. They take longer to get aroused, and we're dealing with someone that is like built internally, and there's a lot more safety th- things that need to be kind of worked with there in terms of energy because we're a um, we as an I am a female body individual. We are a receiver and receivers with an- plenty of many hundreds of years of ancestral karma related to sexual abuse and trauma. And so there's plenty of reasons why there needs to, or not need. Oh, need should damn there uh, can be. It will be very beneficial if you are a male bodied individual with a female bodied individual um, to come to a place and maybe it isn't like you're going to have 5 million orgasms and but and have delayed ejaculation with that you have maybe not learning that skill although hooray for you if you do um but understanding that your bodies are different all bodies are different and from what alika is saying so you're you kind of learned to like harness that fire yeah from a yeah. very early age um like how old are you like 15 <laughs> 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 i'm 39 actually now yeah. but i you know i th- i think i was started Sexual active when I was ten. Woo! So I was six. No. <laughs> with her bear. Earlier. With her stuffed animal. <laughs> with my stuffed animal. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Amy was a late bloomer. I was a late bloomer. Eighteen. Well, look at me now. Look at you now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So okay. So how did you learn that? What did you do? Learn. You mean how did you even learn? How do you learn to kind of harness the the chi and not just touch yourself and just ejaculate right away? Patience. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, it's for me. It's just I find a lot. Just I remember the first time I, I discovered ejaculation when I was in the shower and I was, you know, rubbing myself and massaging my penis and uh, I think I was I don't know I was probably like ten or eleven or something and. I ejaculated and it was like, oh my God. I was like one with God. And I grew up Catholic and Christian. So I'm like, oh my God, I found like this secret, <laughs> this, this secret thing. Yeah. Oh my God, it's the best thing ever. Yeah. To all my friends. <laughs> They're all like, we're so ahead of you. <laughs> so I love pleasure. Um, it's one of my passions in life. Is And how do I sustain that? So through masturbation was one of the ways I could have that pleasure ongoing for, you know, why would I only want to have that for five minutes when I can have it for an hour or two hours? Um, and it was later on when I, I, I found different teachers that showed me different techniques. Um, like Charles Muir? Charles Muir was one of them. A Montak Chia um, was it the multi-orgasmic man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. another great book um, I would recommend any man that doesn't know about not ejaculating. <laughs> You're like, what? I can have an orgasm without ejaculating? Why would anyone want to do that? <laughs> In fact, my friend just told me that today. <laughs> yeah. yeah that they, they asked that question. Why would anyone want to do that? Yeah, he's like, why would anyone want to do that? Yeah, well, let's talk about why. Let's talk, okay, so, I mean, we all know that when uh, male-bodied individuals ejaculate, they get 
it expels a lot of energy, a lot of energy. And there's that refractory period. Not only does it take some time for some of the penises to get hard again, um, but also the energy just goes down. There's like that desire to just like roll over and go to sleep. It pulls but, a lot of you. It's biologically linked to. Yeah. Yeah. But there's some exceptions to the rules because my friend told me that he could ejaculate like five times. And I was like, he's a superhero. My, well, my, my tier <laughs> one that I just was seeing for like a little while back, he could do back to back sessions, which is why I kept him around for a long time. <laughs> Because <laughs> I was like, whoa. And he had like this self lubricating penis. So it was just like. Is he not f- circumcised? He was circumcised. It was an anomaly. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody knows my tier one, <laughs> hit that. Um, Free lube. <laughs> <laughs> So he could go back to back, and it was really incredible. And I just asked him. He, he said, since he was, you know, first started becoming sexually active, he was able to um, have multiple orgasms. I was like, that's a gift, yo. That's a super gift. Well, and with age too, right? Like, yeah. you, you know, the he, younger my you are, lost it. Yeah. <laughs> After he's like, he couldn't do it anymore. When he was like, he is now like when fifty like, years old, forty. Well, he's forty now, but I think when it, maybe in his mid twenties, it changed. Yeah. Yeah. When you're young, you know, you're eighteen. Yeah, of course you can like ejaculate over and over. Like, oh, I'm gonna keep going, keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but it changes just like erections change, and the refractory period grows and gets longer. Um, and then that's, that sounded weird, but that's what I meant. So, um, but yeah, so but there's reasons why. So it isn't just about being able to match your partner if you're in a heterosexual relationship. It also is about harnessing chi, that energy that you're expelling. And so yeah, so there's a lot of really good. But like there's like health benefits. Are there techniques that if, if folks are out there in the listening land, are there techniques that they can use to like build up this not stamina, but just build up or is it, is it a practice more like mind over matter? Uh, well, there's edging that, you know, right. you take yourself to the point of where you're going to come and then you slow. I it do down. that with my vibrator often. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Build it up. But then, up. but then you always come. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, yeah. But I can have, have multiple orgasms. Well, women, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Different story. Because that it doesn't deplete, you know, their energy. It's a whole it's 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 different well, a lot of, because we're not ex- ex- like basically having the um, ejaculate most of the time isn't. Well, no, even if they do ejaculate, yeah. it raises their energy. I up. do get tired after I ejaculate. Do you want to smoke a cigarette and roll over? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I do. <laughs> well, the, the, the esoteric aspect of it is um, women um, bring heaven down through their head, through their yoni. So they're like blessing the earth. And men are opposite. They bring heaven through their growing up through their head through the crown. Mm. So that's there's a different flow there yeah. for men and women. Well, and then there's also like the yin yang too, right? So like... For for uh, for men, the the sexual energy is starting in the genitals and pulling it outward into the rest of the body, and for female body individuals, the sexual energy is starting outward and pulling it into the genitals. Sim- like similar thing, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. So it makes sense that they would they would kind of come from different different angles. So exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah. they talk about you know not ejaculating as the immortality. Mm. That's what these. Towels I've seen are. Charles Mir. He looks. He's <laughs> doing well. <laughs> yeah. How old is he now? And he looks. He's like eighty, and he's he looks like. Sparkling. Yeah. He's he's just like he's still banging. It. I mean, men have the largest of all primates. Homo sapiens have the largest testicles of, and this with the scrotum outside the body. This is all anthropologically speaking. Like if you study primates, so we are designed for pleasure more than any other primate, um, especially uh, since the penis is also much larger than any other primate. I was reading a book about this, and I thought it was interesting. Sex at dawn? Yeah. Well, I was listening to They were reading it to me. That's <laughs> <laughs> we call that reading these days. <laughs> but I thought that was so interesting when you actually do look at, um, like, I mean, we are. We're, we're designed for pleasure. Same with um, the female bodies. Like, we have these or organs that are external that are used for pleasure. And I think that we tapping into them and learning how to uh, edge, that, that's really awesome. Like, that would be the first stage. And yeah. then the, uh, there's other, um, they call it the million dollar point, which is between your scrotum and your anus. The taint? The, the perineum. The, the, ca- the kundalini spot. <laughs> the perineum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you use these the three, million the dollar three spot. fingers here. Yeah. Your uh, pointer, middle, and ring. Uh-huh. And you press... Pretty firmly, like when you're about to ejaculate, that, that's a technique I do um, that I've learned from these books. But what I add to that technique is because you kind of ejaculate, but you injaculate. Um, and then I'll do this. Oh, it goes in your bladder is what you're saying. You ejaculate or you, what do you mean? Well, you, you have an orgasm, but you want to send that energy up, uh-huh. up the spine. Okay. Um, to, you know, again, this is like the healing for your body and to build your energy. So I send it up the 
my spine through these different breath techniques and different bandhas or these pumping actions from my sacrum and anus and then up to my heart and then the back of the occipital, bringing my head up and then bringing it down the front of the body to cool it off because mm. heat up the back, cool down the front. Mm. So, it's so a, when you're saying, so you're saying there, you don't ejaculate you. It's, it's, there's still an, you're expelling energy, but the energy goes upward. Cause you're still having the contractions like you're ejaculating, but you're not actually ejaculating the orgasm contractions of the genitals. Okay. Yeah. Yes. But there just isn't fluid coming out. Yes. Yeah. So that's the only difference. So instead of expelling the fluid that you get those same pleasurable orgasmic contractions of the genitals, that's the, that's the part that sends you in the euphoria. And then the energy travels up you instead of outward. And then you can, now it's going up your spine then down the front of your body and it's being almost like recycled exactly and that's, how, that, and that's the key to immortality mm-hmm. what these sages realize because it is pleasure but how do we unite that with the oneness with god mm-hmm. um you know if we're just most people have sex just to procreate but these other tantric or taoist practices is like how do we m- merge with god mm-hmm. with ourselves and with our partner well, and obviously, I think in, in Tantra and probably Taoism too is is that we were given these bodies that can experience so much pleasure. Of clearly, it's not just for for, for procreation. <laughs> like, there's all these <laughs> yummy things here. Why don't we just use them? Anthropologically speaking, we're designed for pleasure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just studied this yeah. pleasure seekers. Bonobos, not so much. They last about all of six seconds. That's the that's the average. Uh, chimps are like something like 13 seconds. Yeah, but can they bang it out over and over and over again? Like maybe no. that's all you need. No, no, that's why they that, everything's smaller. They have like a one inch penis on a, like a silverback. <laughs> <laughs> but the but bonobos, but the bonobo, that's a gorilla. Wait, what? The bonobos are the primates. Free, I'm talking primates. Oh, primates. Yeah, but the bonobos are the free love ones. The bonobos are like bonobos the, the make make chimps. love, not war. Uh, apes. They don't rape. Right. Yeah. They, like no and rape. they bang it out. They're like, hey, we have a fight. Let's have sex. And but then they only last for 30 seconds. Yeah, but problem solved. Yeah. <laughs> That's all it takes. <laughs> One inch penis on the silverback. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so we have edging. We have pressing into the, uh, the perineum. Spot. Yeah, yes. million dollar spot. And. Yes, and then are you doing oh, a kegel exercise? Qu- wait, question. Do you have your partner ever do that? The preni- the perineum spot? Uh, press? I never or- had her do that. I, okay. I normally do that myself. Usually. Would you recommend maybe if I wanted to help? <laughs> well, if, if, you're, if your, nails are, your nails are cut, so no, no, I, I, yeah. Would, yeah, I, I would I keep yours. them short. You never know when you got to go in there for that prostate massage. <laughs> <laughs> I make a really good like lesbian, too, with my short fingernails. Yeah. Yeah. I'm heteroflexible. <laughs> Well, other thing is um, learning. Well, other techniques is diet, eating oh, yeah. healthy, right? Exercise, yoga, whatever fitness that you're going to do. Really knowing your body. You, you can't experience pleasure if you don't know your body. So this is kind of my other. I've always been physical, act, physically active, and always trained and done yoga and surfing and all these things. So I really know know my body well. When you know your body, then you can know how to give pleasure, and you know how to experience pleasure in your body. Then you can know how to give it to somebody else. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have that. Start there. Um, the other thing, I, you know, I learned massage from a very young age. I was massaging girls when I was, like, probably six-year-old. My friends, they were, like, in high school. And they're like, oh, can you massage me for a dollar? And I'm like, of course. <laughs> wow. So I started massaging from a very young age. So I know bodies. And for me, again, women are water. So massaging to heat them up, you know. So they're ready to go by the time you're ready, you know, to go too. So that's important, I think, in building, becoming a strong, confident masculine is learning how to open up a woman's body, learning how to have her f- feel pleasure and tease her. And all these things are important. And without you just like, I just want to jump on her and fuck the shit out of her in 30 seconds, right? You gotta <laughs> warm, up, warm up the water. I like this analogy with the water because... Um, it just makes so much sense. When you're boiling a pot of water, you don't just it doesn't go from zero to a hundred. It takes some time. And once the water's boiling, it goes on can go women's sexual desire is like insatiable. So it's like as a man, you know, I, I, there's another technique of when you actually are penetrating a woman of like you go nine shallow and then one deep. Because you don't want to stay... I call it the pump or the grind. I'm like, because I like the grind. You like the pump. Can we do 50-50 here? Yeah, he's saying not 50-50, I is it? I like this. I like this better. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, this is, this is more, more shallow than deep, though, because this is not what porn's showing, that's for sure. Well, the thing is, the, 
more porn people, they're used to the high energy when most you know men aren't. So they, they can handle that and they can be with that. But if you haven't practiced and you're not really like I've had a lot of practice, <laughs> so yeah. I, I can. But f- I would say for beginners, you want to start with that. Shallow. So nine. Because she, the G yeah. spot is, you know, only a few yeah. inches. Yeah. Before. Well, and so this is the thing when, when you're just doing like the pump, just like the, the, the bump and grind, not even, not even grind. Yeah. You're not, you're missing all the good stuff. Yeah. Like you yeah. just barely, you just pass over the labia and the first inch where all the nerve endings are in the G spot really quickly and go right around to the back, like maybe the cervix or like the walls that don't even have a lot of nerve endings. And so, yes, yeah, so this makes Plenty of sense. Another analogy is like you don't want to spend too much time in enemy lines. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> that sounds really intense. I like this. Where are you going? Where are you going? Well, like if you're doing a lot of deep thrusts, you know, a woman's it's like being in enemy enemy lines. You're gonna the woman's gonna squeeze you and take you over and then you're gonna ejaculate. Ah. So you wanna you know test the water, see what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> Hanging out, giving you all the good stuff, and I'm not going to eat just the tip. <laughs> so so you're saying do a lot of just the tip JTT and then it. Yeah. so next time you could be like, Honey, you wanna JTT me tonight? <laughs> and they'd be like, No, I wanna do this porn sex. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Let's listen to this podcast and learn new ways to have Damn. sex. <laughs> yeah. I like it. We like to we go up on the tangents. We're like a little comedy show over here. <laughs> Oh, God. Okay, so we got... Um, so yes, massaging so a woman for like an hour before you even like do any type of other... Are you doing form. vulva massage or just all over body massage? Start with the back first okay. and then flip her, flip her over and then you're massaging the legs and then, then you, and the arms and then you're going to go to the breasts and then in between the legs and these so, type of things. So, okay, because I, a lot of people when they hear you say they're like, yeah, yeah, I do that on our anniversary or, <laughs> you know, on her birthday. Right. Not, right. They're not, they were there on a, on a regular day just because it's, you know, it's Tuesday and we're going to have sex. A lot of people think it's, you know, oh, I figured out what they like, so I'm going to go right to the nipples and right to the genitals and bam, it's over in 20 minutes. So you're saying as part of being the divine masculine in, in your relationship with your female partner, you show up in that way where you, you full, like, basically fully show up for her and not just because it's her birthday or her anniversary. Exactly. Because you that's what you're like warming a body up. Thing, yeah, she's, you know? yeah. There's no quickies in your house? <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> My but partner's not anti-quickie right now, too. And I'm like, damn it, sometimes I just need a little, little pump and grind to get me going, like coffee in the morning. But I well, like that, this that, no quickie That comes quickie back rule. to values. Okay. Oh. So, <laughs> <laughs> so if you value you that, schooled. you need to support that. I know, you're way. right, you're right. <laughs> I think he's starting to. <laughs> Values, April. Values. <laughs> if that's important to you, it is. I'm gonna have discussion tonight about this. <laughs> values, everyone. Uh, so, yeah. How many quickies yeah. a week you do you need? <laughs> At least seven. Really? I don't know. I'm a horny person. She calls herself a horny bastard these I days. Do. I was trying to be PC while Alika's here. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So we talked about this on one of the last podcasts. So uh, and Alika's uh, different approach here. Let's talk about values. And part of the values are um, how. What are your sexual needs and how often? Let's talk about that. Let's meet. Let's, let's create a win-win. Are you talking to me? You're asking me. Yeah, you. So okay. So ideally, like, what does my sex life look like? Yeah. Um, realistically, I have to have one <laughs> orgasm a day, either self-induced or with my partner. I prefer two because I think my orgasms do better in pairs because I like even numbers. Because <laughs> <laughs> she's type A. <laughs> this is right. So, and I do. I get a little hangry spice if I haven't had an orgasm. So, even in period sex and all the days, uh, I need. Yeah, I, I need personally, and I've actually communicated this. Um, to my partner but um there were just what, the other day he had to run and do a project and i was like wait you're leaving me hanging here but that's when the vibrator comes into play so you're saying your needs are more about the orgasm and not the actual like uh, section is great too i like the connection the long like i um, checking in with my partner for sure but they're like we're when you're a busy human which is i'm sure lots of people out there are super busy they have jobs there's no time in the morning then at night you like go out to dinner you ate too much food and you want to pass out yeah. I try not to do that. <laughs> um, but I think that, like, for my partner, I, I would love a minimum of five at least connective sex times a week. At least five. That could be, like, connected quickies or connected uh, long extended. The quickies are just fun because it's, like, banging it out. And I like also... Um, How long does it take for you to get an orgasm? Oh, it varies. It depends on my hormone level. Sometimes I can do two minutes. But today... 
one hour, I, I just had to watch porn when he left. <laughs> <laughs> I know we don't like porn, but I needed... No, we don't dislike porn. We don't like it as sex educators. I, I think like, porn I like is it. okay in res- responsibly. Yeah. Yeah. If you if you can't live without porn, that's a problem. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you can't orgasm without porn, then yes. you might want to reevaluate that. See yeah. Amy. Yeah, come to, come check me out. We'll talk about things. Um, okay. Can I answer your questions? Yes. Okay. Good. Yes. Well, so what? I, but but I like where this was going though with Alika in the so like looking at women as water. So again, we're talking about heterosexual relationships. They're water. They need to be warmed up. So you don't just like flip a switch. It's not just an electric stove, people. Like you don't just even an electric stove takes a while to heat war- water. So you're saying yeah that you want to warm them up so that you can bring them to their like most juiciest, orgasmic, sensual, connected self. You gotta take a lot of time. Yes. With the whole body. And then you said nipples. And then you said genitals. And yes. and like this is what women are craving from their mm. partners. And yes, they also want the occasional quickies too. But like so many women, and not all women, but this is what plenty of women are craving where they're wanting, especially long-term relationships, they're wanting more time dedicated to the whole being, mind, body, spirit, and entire physical body beyond genitals. Yes. Well, there's a difference between ecstasy and just getting off. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you want to bring a woman to ecstasy and bliss, you have to do that because she won't get there without that. Mm-hmm. That's that, that's what's important. And for me, what I realize is the more pleasure I can give a woman, the more pleasure I feel in myself. Mm-hmm. That's that's what's my what's driving me. Um, it's for me. It's difficult to receive. Um, I'm better at it now because if you want to be a good receiver, you got to, I mean, a, a good giver, you got to be a good receiver too. But my gift is, is giving. Um, and I've been, I've learned a lot of how to really, really give. And in giving is where I feel a lot of pleasure. So the more pleasure and the more orgasms I can give a woman, the more in touch I feel with God. And then I merge with her and then we merge together into this place of, you know, bliss and ecstasy moving beyond the physical realm and that you can't do in 10 minutes <laughs> no definitely not no yeah i Unless like that distinction like Babaji or something. yeah baba g is a different story yeah i don't know who's baba g if anyone is like baba, baba g. g spot yeah baba g spot <laughs> g spot that's who he really is um i like that i wanted to write that down i might have to use that as like something quote as a quote it's defining the difference between just getting off and ecstasy, yeah, because one of them is really like just taking care of a need, and the other one is goes beyond that. And and for me, like when I have an orgasm, that's just getting off orgasm, I'm like momentarily charged up from. It. I'm like, oh, feeling good. When I have that blast off, where it's transcendent, and even or even if it's not like an orgasm, but I'm having kind of a transcendent sexual experience, that is what makes me feel alive. That's life force energy. That's really fueling that, and it really. You know, if I'm not doing that on my own, but I'm doing it with a partner, it takes my partner to show up in a, re- show up in a really strong way for that. And I've had, you know, um, kind of tantric massages professionally and also my, my partner and I, we did Charles Muir's training mm-hmm. and he was doing the practice there on the, on the G-spot, the sacred spot, the practice that you do too. And, you know, I had went into this deep place of this, this crygasm release mm-hmm. and that release combined with, so combined with him, you know, showing up and spending that much time, you know, 90 minutes, I think, just in this really soft, slow, sensual way um, and doing all the warm up for my entire body. And having that release, and then ha- and then having having a crygasm, and having him being so strong, holding that space. That's mm-hmm. that, that another aspect. Of the divine masculine is like, I can handle you in all of your tears. Like if you want to be angry right now, if you want to yes. yell, if you want to cry, if you want to scream, yes. like that is a really potent thing. I think it's a good segue to go because we're talking yeah. about all the bliss. Yeah, Let's talk about the, the other, the shadow. The, yeah, the shadow yeah. side. Um, well, one in three women have been sexually abused, um, and I didn't know that's a huge number. That's huge. Yeah. Um, so the G spot is where a lot of the trauma is held, a lot of where women hold shame and guilt and all that stuff. So when you start to open that up and you start to release that, because, again, let's talk about the orgasms, right? There's three types of orgasms that women can have, clitoris, G spot, and vaginal. So most women never experience a G spot orgasm um, because of their holding that, you know, whatever trauma or whatever is there. And when you can release that and open that up, Kali craziness can come out, and I've experienced that many of times, and it can be very scary, and it, it, it can bring up um, men's own trauma, their mother wound, their father wound, whatever is there. And if you haven't worked through that, you're not going to be able to 
be there for a woman fully. And a woman can sense that because women are more sensitive than men are. So this is partially, you know, the integration of what is a divine masculine is, you know, not just taking care of the body, but also taking care of your mind, your psychology, working through that stuff, you know, um, also having a deep spiritual practice, like, are we just a body or are we, you know, more than that? So these are all things that a lot of men don't really look at Mm -hmm. and why women like where's all the divine masculine it's like well it takes a lot of work to do all that Mm -hmm. stuff and is it in most men aren't aren't educated in that they don't realize why or what's the need for that so that's partially why i do this work is to educate men and women and couples around the class that they never got in school. Nobody mm-hmm. teaches this shit in school. This no, is why I'm so not. grateful that you guys are having this podcast mm-hmm. and really sharing this information that nobody gets, especially in the Midwest, like you said. Right. With the mm-hmm. shame and guilt around Christ- Christianity and around no sex, sex before right. marriage and all this shit. You know, and it's only for procreation and not about experiencing oneness with God. No. No, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's definitely a really good point. You yeah. don't get that class in school. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then back to what you were saying about the sacred spot piece, though, uh, and, and sexual trauma. And there, I think episode, what episode did we do where I had that massage? I had a yoni massage um, from a woman. It was it. Yeah. Episode, episode 15. I think it was 16. 14. No, that's empowerment. It was, go to our yeah. website. Okay, go to our website. I think it's episode 16. And I had a, um, a yoni massage, and she does, it's kind of like a womb healing, womb clearing massage. And uh, and I talked about this in past episodes. I had had an abortion in December, so there was like a deep release through that. Mm. Um, and so I had experienced so that same hands on healing, you know, having uh, my body touched in a way that was held with that reverence and that release of this, you know, because the body's brilliant. Mm -hmm. It holds, it retains knowledge. It remembers. And you're saying, so people who have had sexual trauma, the body's just retaining that knowledge and holding holding it there in that, you know, the sacred spot and the the G spot, G area tissue. It numbs out, it turns off, and it's like, this wasn't safe anymore. We shut down. Yeah, and when you go and get a massage, usually, unless you're going to some Asian spa, Mm -hmm. um, they don't touch... They don't massage the breast. They don't massage the groin. They don't massage the inner thighs. You know, and that, that's the place that we need more attention. And there's a lot of shame and guilt around that. So when there's, you educate people around that, people can be more open to that, mm-hmm. to be able to have healing around that. Because mm-hmm. nobody, you know, nobody is skilled in how to massage the yoni, how to massage the breast in a loving way mm-hmm. and without it being overly sexual. Yeah, when porn's not showing them that. I did, I did one of my first massages I got when I was 18. The guy definitely massaged my labia and I did not ask for it. And so I was freaked out by massages for a long time because I was like, wait, I think it is a consensual agreement, you know, going in. Always consent. If I knew it was going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, whoa, this is happening. And I did not have an orgasm. I just like froze up and I'm like, okay. So I think that I love the idea of definitely getting the inner thighs rubbed and like like a release in in um getting massage because i i never get massages because of that traumatic experience that i had when i was 18 Aww. you always get you consent some, before you touch the you. labia yeah there you go yeah alika to the rescue <laughs> dun, dun, dun. well the thing is the inner groin there's a lot of connective tissue there there's a lot of tightness there even in the yoni a lot of women have they can't have an orgasm because there's so much tension there's so much tightness in the yoni mm-hmm. you know when I massage women inside there, I can massage the inside of the thigh that you can't get from superficial. Mm-hmm. You know, I can massage inside the thigh, um, all these different areas. And once you, that opens up, then a woman can have the waters flow and have a more powerful orgasm. But if it's all tight, you know, women try to have an orgasm by squeezing and, uh, mm-hmm. and then they never get an orgasm. It's like, no, you got to relax and let go which is a different type of orgasm, which is, in, in my experience, more powerful. Well, a lot of them don't even know they're doing that, that kind yes. of squeezing, because they don't even know there's other possibilities where it's more like this unconscious clench. Education. Yeah, education, people. <laughs> Workshops. I just clench my pelvic floor. You mean clenching, like doing PC, yeah. the PC muscles like kegels? Right. Yeah. yeah. I think that always helps. Yeah, Achieve and, and that, 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 can, that happens naturally, right. too. But, of course, you can do it consciously. Yeah. But that's not the clench you're talking about. You're talking about kind of this like unconscious, just like uh, tightness because it's trying well, to. Well, maybe you know. It, it's tension. The thing is, if you're massaging your clit, clitoris, that tension will give you that type of orgasm. But if you want to have a G spot orgasm or a, or a vaginal, sometimes that doesn't work. Like if someone was so used to giving themselves an orgasm by just rubbing rubbing their, one out, rubbing one out like really tough, and they're squeezing and they get to have that experience they get stuck in that habit. And then when someone's trying to give to them, 
they're not in that role of receiving and they're still trying to you know do it themselves and then you're not going to have a powerful orgasm yeah i think so what you're saying right here is for um, for the divine masculine to do their own work. So you, we were talking about what's really important for them is to do their own work to unpack their wounding. Exactly. And then when they're with a partner who all of a sudden all their stuff is coming out, the partner's cry, having cryogasm and their and anger, whatever, even if it's not during sex, it's outside of sex. Mm-hmm. Because the divine masculine, this person, the this male male individual has done that work then they can fully show up for that person in a way that makes them feel safe and in turn that person can then fully surrender and release and go into deeper places of sexuality and sensuality yeah and that comes back i want to bring back to what's important to people and the values you know like for me that's important and that's um, a high value for me around spirituality sexuality taking care of my body and i have a partner who meets me and supports me and and she also you know shares the same practices so that brings a, a relationship that's more alive and fulfilling. You know, anytime anybody is challenging your values, you're not going to feel good. Anytime anybody's supporting your values, you're going to feel inspired, motivated, and you're going to be, you know, fulfilling your whatever goal and your purpose in life. I call it the same frequency. That's what I like, I, like with my partner. I'm like, we're on the same frequency, like the same wave. And it, it's totally true. And I think that it starts from a value system. And I love that. And I love just verbalizing that. And I think it's important to, to check in with your partner. If you're in this monogamous or open or wh- whichever way you are, check in about the values. Even if you've been together for 10 years or 10 months or 10 hours, 10 minutes. No, t- 10 minutes, wait, at, wait it out. <laughs> 10, 10, 10, 10. See, it, see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> how, um, how can men learn to... Uh, tap deeper into their vulnerability because we live in a culture that's very much um, d- doesn't allow a lot of space for a lot of space for men to be me caveman, me strong. Yes. Yeah, they're not supposed to. Like, there's, they're not supposed to be weak. They're not supposed to be sensitive. They're not supposed to be soft. They're not supposed to cry. Um, anger is accepted, yet there's also some stuff about anger, and there's too muchness there. It's confusing. But how can they? Um, or maybe you can share how you've learned to tap into those deeper emotions and felt safe to express them? Um, I grew up in a family that wasn't very touchy-feely, um, not very loving, and I didn't understand why from a very young age. And that brought me closer to women, and women were more in touch with their vulnerability. And I learned from women how to get in touch with my own vulnerability and actually express that in a way to bring connection with 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 a divine feminine and in in turn it 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 led me down this journey of exploration of you know seeing these things these traumas so it again i bring it back to what was most important to me was about finding love within myself and finding a partner that i could share my life with and that brought me into being more vulnerable because that was important to me and i realized that women were very vulnerable and to me women are the most powerful you know beings on the planet they brought men into existence so i i I could learn from women and that brought me down into understanding the psychology around that piece around enter beyonce who around the world (laughs) and and i think what you're saying is interesting because there's this whole idea of instead of you saying i am a man and she is woman so we are different you're like no she, I can learn a lot from her, and we're in there in turn. Like we share, we're we're similar. So there's a lot that we share here, and there's so the idea that women are soft, like you know, his, hysterical, vulnerable creatures, and men aren't. Um, no, there's we're there's that pol- that balance, that polarity. You have all that in you too, and so you looked at them as teachers as opposed to the enemy. And I, I think it's taking responsibility was one of the main things. Like, if I'm getting upset about what my partner is saying or doing, what is it about me that I don't like about them that is in me? But that's, like, in general with humans. Like, a lot of times if you have anger or resentment towards another person, I noticed that a long time ago within myself. I was like, why am I having these negative emotions? But I think if you tie those in and tap the, into those in your relationship, um, you're going to be winning and come out on top for sure. What is it that you're getting upset about or exactly. um, it's challenging you? The the golden nugget I got recently from one of these teachers, his name's Dee Martini, and he really helped me a lot to see is anytime that you have judgment or, you know, towards anybody else, um, you're polarized in seeing a situation or seeing your story, maybe in the positive or in the negative. And anytime you see that, you're going to be polarized. And anytime you're polarized, you 
are only seeing half of the picture. But if you can see both sides and weed out and ask the right questions around what's, um, uh, let me see an example. Um, for instance, my, my partner, she slept with this Tantra guy. And, um, and then she lied about it. And then she ended up telling me. And it was, it was really hard for me to kind of be with that. And I'm like, wow, this is so difficult. And I'm just sitting with it, like eating away at me and trying to ask her questions about what's going on. And when I really sat with it and I would look at what was the benefits out of her sleeping with him, mm. you know? So that's me because I was only looking at the negatives like, oh, yeah. my God, I'm not I'm not worthy enough. I'm not good enough. She wants to be with this guy. He's better than me. He's a better tantra guy or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I looked at the, the benefits, I'm like, well, it brought us closer. It, it, it made me realize that I really I just want to be with her. It made me see all these things that were in the light. Then then I could have appreciation for what happened. And anytime you don't have appreciation for anything that happened in your life, it's baggage. Mm-hmm. Anything that you can be um, grateful for is fuel that moves you forward in your life. So. So, so moving through the kind of getting stuck and holding on to um, the victimhood slash the glass half empty space. Living in a fantasy. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, anytime you're polarized, you're, you're living in a fucking fantasy. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people are. Most people? (laughs) (laughs) By the way, thank you for sharing that story. That's like outing some, that's awesome. That's, we all, we've all done it on air. And that's another thing where exactly what we're talking about here too is ways to tap in the vulnerability um, is outing the vulnerability, outing the heavy, hard things. Hey, so my partner slept with someone else and I was really insecure, going through insecure space of not feeling worthy and like this other person was better than me and that they were going to leave me for them. And like that's a lot of people hold that in because they're afraid that the world will think they're weak. I went through this with my new partner and his ex the other week, you know, not, um, and, and I totally just tapped into my, my insecurities with it. It was like not his stuff, my stuff. And it, really did bring us to a new level just tapping in and being like where is this coming from for me it's you know my fear of abandonment my fear of not being good enough my fear of not being the best or the most special so like tapping into that is so important and um that's what folks need to i not need should no that's what folks can do if they choose to (laughs) well i think what i relate that to is are you choosing love or fear Mm -hmm. right and in in my relationship with my partner i could see if I go back to my values of what's important to me and seeing my partner, she supports all the things I value and we're, we have the same goals and we're going the same place, it's easier to ask those questions about what are the benefits of, out of that negative. Mm-hmm. Um, otherwise, you know, you just cut your loss, say fuck it, and you move and do the same shit with the next person you're with. Because <laughs> if you don't work that shit out, you're you just going to work it out. You keep doing it over and over and over again. I, I always say I like to the break the person. wheel. Yeah, I'm like, break the wheel. Let's not, like, let's not reinvent it. We don't need the same wheel. Let's, let's, like, let's reinvent the wheel. Um, in each relationship, new relationship, if you choose one is a new start, it's a fresh start to do it right. And I, I had horrible communication skills in previous relationships. And now I'm really working on that because I like to stuff things and be like, I'm great. Everything's great. And then I'm like, ah, yeah. just kidding. Yeah, yeah. And then I cheat and have an affair because I wasn't happy and voicing my things. And that's where it starts. So it starts with you. It starts with you, me, you, exactly. Amy. I think one of the things that you also that I'm hearing that you're saying kind of indirectly is that part of stepping into the divine masculine space is um, is like we talked about kind of owning your vulnerability, but it's also to admitting to yourself that you're not perfect. It's kind of telling your pride to go fuck itself and just saying, like, I'm a human. I have darkness. I have flaws. I have pain. And this is a part of who I am. And I'm not going to hide from it. I'm going to embrace it. In fact, expose it and be okay with that. Yeah, because. When I look at it, I fucking did way more fucked up shit <laughs> than she did. Like, you know, and I, here I am. She did one thing and I'm making it like the end of the world. Right. When it's if I look at my fucking past, I fucked up a lot. <laughs> but, you know, I, I think the only way we learn is through making mistakes. Right. And yeah. I've made a lot of the same mistakes over and over and over again. And then it came to the point where, hey, I'm going to lose this person that's most important to me. I need to fucking clean up my act. And plus it's like the definition (laughs) of insanity is like repeating the same action over and over again, expecting a different result. And I'm like, that's what I said. I'm like, I'm going to, I want to create a healthy relationship. So if I repeat the same patterns that I've done, I'm obviously that's not going to be the end result. So great. Like, well, I was in, I was in like three relationships, you know, and I was living in this fantasy of like, yeah, I'm going to make this all work. And I did for a whole year. And that was a lot. That was like my whole life. It was like a lot of work. (laughs) (laughs) It was a lot of work, a lot of sex, which was great. (laughs) Good thing you're not ejaculating all the time. (laughs) (laughs) 
that helped a lot. <laughs> but it was a lot, also a lot of drama, you know, and I realized that I didn't want to have it, it took a lot of my energy and I wasn't going, you know, I, what I really wanted was, you know, a bigger life. And I realized I wasn't going to have a bigger life by being managing these three relationships. So um, it was great because I wanted it after getting divorced. You know, I'm, I'm going to do what I want. And I lied a lot in my divorce and I cheated on my my wife a lot. And, you know, when I was doing this medicine work and I met my my shaman and my teacher, he he's like, you know, if you want you need if you want to help people you need to be in integrity so mm-hmm. i was like oh yeah okay well then i'm gonna tell these women that i'm just gonna do this and i'm just gonna own it <laughs> <laughs> and, and then they started falling in love with me and i'm like fuck how am i gonna do all this and they just wanted me yeah. <laughs> <For> themselves <laughs> even though they said no oh, no yeah we want but deep down i knew they just wanted to be with me but i just wanted to have fun so i wasn't being in integrity and responsible by saying hey i can't be with you mm-hmm. because you know you want more but i don't want more <laughs> but your That's actions right. show different. <laughs> yeah. Well, creating the win-win with if those parties involved, it wasn't like a win-win for them. They wanted you solo. and But I they think weren't owning the, the, themselves either because right. they weren't saying that up front. Yeah. Because they're afraid of losing you, right. yeah. And so, so this was that that yeah that they, they could turn you. They're like, oh, I'll turn them. I'll all turn women them. think it's that, that it's that, hope. and all women yeah. want more. Yeah. I'm sure there the men are too. exceptions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The men are like, I can turn them. Yeah, I can turn them. Oh, I, my tears thought they could turn me. I was like, oh, mm-mm. No, good luck. <laughs> good luck Can't tame a wild beast. <laughs> <laughs> so if people want to find wait, you, wait, wait, no, oh, I have more oh questions. My God, I'm so sorry. What the hell? Where are you Level going? Two listening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a couple more questions here. Sure. Um, okay, so if they want to find you, where do you live, Alika? No. <laughs> right down the street from yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, they don't know where you live. Though we're good. Oh, good. You have the like, whole fan club showing up here <laughs> for both of you. Massage me. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so now I wanted to talk about okay, the, the integrity piece too. So um, integrity. So um, essentially, like, if you don't have integrity, you have nothing. And integrity is kind of about of a number of things, but commitment to your word. You know. You say one thing to someone and it it means something and you put that out there and it's there's so there's something to be said about that being integrity and I really like do you read um the way of the superior man yes and yes. was it David Data da- is David Data Data that's how yes. you say it. and it talks about how um it's easy to like all pretty much all men are always going to be attracted to multiple women yes. and all women are going to be attracted to multiple People, men, and all people are just going to be talking to multiple people. Yeah, yes, yeah. We're always going to be attracted to other people. Doesn't mean we have to touch them, but we're always going to be attracted to them. It's just if and if you don't believe that, then you're confused. (laughs) No, then you're living in a fucking fantasy. You're in a bubble. (laughs) Yeah, you're in a bubble. Yeah. And so what? What the way the superior man talks about, and kind of seems like what you had. You're saying you learned as part of your divine masculine journey was that um, it's actually it's in your DNA to always be attracted to multiple women, and it's actually easy as if you were a single person to just go out and have sex with a whole bunch of women and you are but you're not relationship building and you're not building that commitment and that integrity and also there's not a lot of expansiveness and growth for you yes. so that's easy the hard part is the commitment and the integrity with one person yes. and that's where the growth comes and that's where yes. you expand and blast out as a stronger more divine human being totally agree with what you're saying um that was a game changer for me and it's been a hard road because i've been a fucking slut (laughs) you had to slut it out to get there (laughs) exactly (laughs) and i can definitely own that um but to touch on what you're saying for me um finding i don't know if you believe in twin flame with the woo woo things um but it's a whole nother experience when you meet somebody that supports your values and you guys are going in the same place um everything just falls together and love making is so much amazing and spectacular and just life just is i don't know it, it's it's like those movies <laughs> those romantic movies and i thought i would never find that but finding that is um has really changed my perspective in life around Right, I, I I thought I would never want to just sleep with one person, but I always have the desire to sleep with other women. Yeah, that doesn't go away. That doesn't go away. Yeah. But to realize that if I do that, 
that's just going to diminish what I'm building with my partner. Yeah, that building is really important. We talked about this on our last podcast too about we put in all this time into building this this thing. It's it's an investment and um, to go out and yeah, we can be out of integrity and make some like kind of low level moves by sleeping with other people and not telling our partner and live our whole lives in that. Mm-hmm. But we're living our whole lives out of integrity. Then like your whole life is as is out of living at a lower vibration that is haunt- probably haunting you. And in fact, getting away of you really fully connecting with your partner. I mean, it's pretty hard to connect with your partner after you've been lying to them. But the, I guess it, th- that's my opinion too, but. I wouldn't know if it's lower vibration necessarily. Um, I just think it's a different set of values again. Yeah. Like I, I think people could still be, you know, in high vibration and be with multiple people. Um, yeah, I guess that sounded a, a little judgy. So sorry to sound a little judgy. And then you look at other cultures, right? Like in France, quite often the don't ask, don't tell is the policy. So I'm saying that if you're in, un, you know, an understanding, because I'm, I'm not. I'm not all for monogamy. I support non-monogamy. Um, I support ethical cheating, too, if it's part of your arrangement and if it works for you. But I feel like for most people, if it's you're in a relationship and it's, hey, we're monogamous, we're not touching other people, mm-hmm. and you're moving outward and still doing that yes. and coming back and trying to be deeply connected with your partner, it's it's going to be floating around there mm-hmm. and it's going to be really challenging to get to your highest connected self yes. with that that lingering. It's well, just, I, there's no way really, I, I don't know how you get around that. I, I agree. I, coming back to your goal, if we don't set up high priority uh, list of the things we need to do every day in alignment with our goal, just by default, we're going to get distracted. We're going to, some ex is going to call us or mm-hmm. some friend is going to call us or we're going to go on a Facebook or whatever and then we're never going to reach our goal. And maybe maybe we're not really realistic that we really want that goal. So what I realized, you know, there's certain things like I want a house in Kauai mm-hmm. and I want, you know, to have a retreat center and do these things. And being in these three relationships weren't in a lot, weren't going to support that. Well, they were taking <laughs> a lot of energy. <laughs> right. But if I can hone it with this person who wants the same thing, I can have this life that I really want, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so higher yeah, vibration it comes back to checking in with your partner and 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 considering the values to achieve your goals i love that scenario and that's exactly um i i didn't date three people for a year at the same time but and being in my single my single days where i was just banging it out with like multiple um dudes for the most part um uh you know on an irregular basis like it was distracting and but I, fun it was fun for sure but and that was I, in alignment with what you that, wanted at that right time. Yeah. right then it was what i wanted but i it, i noticed that i wasn't going to achieve necessarily all the things that um that are my life lifelong goals and five-year exactly. goals with with that distraction exactly um and it was but so i i do i love this scenario and this breakdown of this it's a good perspective all right, one last question before we answer. Or, or answer and <laughs> answer. Um, do you have any tips for the scenario that we're talking about for um, men to learn how to tap more into their confident self, especially in those relationships where they have partners that are wanting more, like a dominant? They're like, I just want a strong, my strong dominant partner. And those men you're saying that are kind of raised to be more sensitive, um, and that it's hard for them to go in. That they're really uncomfortable going into that stronger dominant space inside or outside of the bedroom do you have any tips on like how they can build more confidence or tools or even if it's in the bedroom um like how can they learn to kind of get rid of some of those layers and just like really tap into their strong masculinity i know it's a really complicated one well is is that more specific from for the bedroom like being more confident in the bedroom i mean that's the main request that i feel like that we get um is is from from people is like like, I want my, my man to be, you know, I, I want him to be a feminist, I want him to be an ally, I want to be his equal. But when we're in the bedroom, I'm really craving for him to just step it up and, you know, like, throw me yes, against the wall yes, and ravish yes. me. Ravishing is okay, a big word. I, I understand. Yeah. Um, there's a twofold answer here. And the first one is about if, if you have a dominant woman. April, April. <laughs> it has to go oh both my. ways because if the woman is going to be holding that dominant role, even when the man's trying to step into that role and not learning to let that down, there's no way that that man's going to be able to do that. So having that conversation and working that out first and, you know, having each partner, hey, I'm going to I'm gonna work on being the man today. I just want you to just be in the role of receiving. Mm-hmm. And even if you don't like something, 
you know, just learn the woman being okay with, hey, okay, this might not be feeling so good, but, you know, um, I'm just going to let let that go and not let the small things. Not if it's like they're touching you and it feels like terrible. Right. Like, yeah, but, yeah. but yeah. the cookie scenario that we've talked about before yeah. on podcasts, like give yes. them a cookie like that feels... Uh, wait, Amy. Oh, you have a good oh, one? they're rubbing your nipples, and they're like, "I love when you touch my breast." And what I love even more if you're a little slower and softer. But what you're saying is, if something's just like okay, yeah. you know. So we're not talking about if it feels terrible. We like to say voice yes. your nose, but you're saying if something's just like, eh, like it's they amazing. could, they could do better. You're, yeah. you're saying as part of stepping into the the feminine side of the whether you're whether you are a man or a woman to step in the feminine would be to receive and soften. Yes, and then that'll help. Women need to inspire men um, because, again, our mothers have taught us how to be more feminine, more like a woman. So a lot of men, I would say first and foremost, get some mentors, some people that are actually embodying the masculine that you desire and you want to be. Hang around those people more and learn from them. Then you'll get off through osmosis how to be the masculine. And, and, you know, if someone's like, you want to be more sexually powerful hang out with me <laughs> or or you know it depends on what you want right you so, five, 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 five. <laughs> <laughs> so you know if you th- that's number one is like getting mentors and then in the scenario of in the bedroom you know learning tools learning how to massage learning how to give a sensual massage how to turn on a woman um getting sensual massages from from a woman learning how to play both roles of being feminine and then being in the role of masculine of giving it's it's a giving receiver role so the masculine for me i I think of it as more of a giver and just being there to be of service and to serve the your goddess and if you can get into that mindset then the telos comes on and your higher self comes on and you're not thinking things just happen spontaneously and then it becomes a play and that's the mindset you want to get into before but if you don't have any kind of tools, you don't have any mentorship, you don't have any other people to look up, you're just shooting in the fucking dark. Mm-hmm. You're going to fucking not hit anything. Yeah. I like so I like that. So there was the mentors piece to so look at look for the other people in your life that you look up that you were like I you know I I want to be You're my mentor, Amy. Spend your time <laughs> with them, learn from them. Um also heard the piece that when we're asking the question about how men can show up more confident, it isn't just them, it's that um there's balancing the you know, the polarities here, how this is also for their female counterparts, if they're really strong in their masculine, how can they soften more into their feminine and to pay attention to that, that it's a two way street. To inspire the men mm-hmm. to be able yes. to and support too, so inspire that, that's and support. support. Yeah. Exactly. And then the last piece was skills, and which brings us to your workshop. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So again, we talked about this in the beginning of the podcast. Um, Alika and his beautiful partner are teaching a workshop at Pure Pleasure on Saturday, October 21st. It's a tantric massage for lovers workshop. And it is a three hour workshop that is going to have a hot live demo and also have actually hands on practice. You will only be practicing with the lover that you arrive with. So it's for couples or loverships only. Um, so if you're in the Santa Cruz area and you want to come practice some of the things that we've been talking about here, um, that will be available to you. And where else can people find you? Like, do you have a website? Well, yeah, the web, the website is still under um, in progress. In progress. Yeah. It's, um, or do you like erotic aliveness.org. Oh, okay, cool. Erotic aliveness.org. So if it's not up functioning when you hear this podcast, revisit it. And like we said, he's really beautiful. So you want to see his photo. <laughs> yep. That's right. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> And when the website comes up, there's a lot of amazing photos on there, too. Okay. Yeah, we'll post a photo but online. The, a little bit about the workshop yeah, I yeah. just want to yeah, share. Because yeah. um, sure. you were talking about skills. Yeah. Um, what I recommend, if you, if you are in a couple, that at least once a week that you have a date night at home. Yeah. Where, you know, one, you know, whether the man is giving to the woman or the woman is giving to the man. And you set up a sacred space, you get candles, you get chocolates, and you make that a time for that every week. And that builds on the, to build the relationship to bring closer. And this is, and we're going to share a specific way of how to give to your partner of how to give them more pleasure around lingam worship and yoni worship and how to massage around the groin and breasts and all these things so that you can, you know, build up 
the fire. Mm-hmm. <laughs> have these tools outside of what porn is showing you. To do. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and um, and this workshop also it was specified as open to all genders and orientations as well. Um, so if you could be for multiple lingams or multiple yonis, <laughs> <laughs> bring your lingams, bring your yonis. They're all welcome. <laughs> Yay! I'm really excited. Um, and then there's two things I thought about that I want to. I just realized in my, a, I don't have ADD, but my type A brain that sometimes is a level one listener. Um, I don't think we actually said what a DACA was. A DACA is what you were saying with a Dakinius, but the male version or masculine version of that. Exactly. And then edging, um, you, you talked about it, but edging, I just want to clarify that, was kind of building up to the point of orgasm, but not giving yourself the orgasm and kind of riding that wave and then letting yourself cool down and then building yourself again up again. And that was the tool that you were talking about that they talk about in the multi-orgasmic man um where you would could eventually learn to have an orgasm without ejaculating by doing that over and over again as a skill yeah well because men can have multi orgasms too yes and by doing that you can learn and by pressing the million dollar point or just you know running that energy through your body for sure and that's the reason why you don't want to ejaculate because if you ejaculate you're fucking done yep (laughs) game over unless you're 20 we should call it the million rupee point (laughs) that's not a lot that's not two (laughs) dollars That's a, what a rip. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> uh, all right, Alika, thank you so much. Mm. Wonderful. I feel like very energized and um, and enlightened. Mm. Alika, amazing. And you just live down the street. <laughs> yes. Yay. High five, 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 five. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for tuning in and join us uh, every Tuesday when we release a new podcast. We see you next Tuesday and ciao for now. Aloha. Don't forget to head on over to our website at shamelesssex.com for more. And for 15% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use coupon code SHAMELESSPP in all caps at purepleasureshop.com.